Right, this is uh, the buck stops here video. I've noticed that uh, United have got Joanne Harris doing a blog. That's very good. And I've noticed that on that blog, it was really, pretty much the same old rhetoric. Waffle, waffle, waffle. About members. And strike dates will be set. Wait for it. Blah, blah, blah. Monitorium. Putting the strikes on hold until it's been an investigation. It's all well and good. I think there should be an investigation. I ain't going to deny that. But to put strike dates on hold is a show of weakness. That's my professional opinion. My personal opinion, for what it's worth. Um, and I think that in a lot of cases, I've been a lot more professional than some of the lead officers, in particular John Murphy. At least I've got a pair of bollocks. I've stood up and said what was on my mind, and I've spoken up for the drivers. If my information is so inaccurate, Mr. Murphy, as you keep saying on the Facebook page for Metroline, and if we're all stupid, idiots, bell ends, and one word I hate in particular because I've got an autistic son, divs, you're the lead officer. Do you know how insulting that word is? Probably not. Bluff your way through most things, so you probably don't even know what it means. Anyway. It's a derogatory term for somebody with learning difficulties for the benefit of the uneducated, Mr. Murphy. Anyway, that being said, Unite Hierarchy, Peter Kavanagh and up, seem quite happy for you to go around behaving this way. Why, we don't know. Had votes of no confidence going against you. Reps have been removed. False allegations have been made. And they were false allegations. Because otherwise, why would the person O'Neill Lewis have won his case and his appeal. Anyway, we won't go into all of that. I'm not here for that. I would like to point out that strike dates need to be set as soon as possible. If the union is truly, truly there for the members, and if it's serious about remote sign-on, I would honestly expect to see strike dates within the next month. We won't. I'm pretty certain, but that's what I think we should do. The COVID ballot, that's gone by the wayside. When I spoke to my rep, I was told that it's gonna be combined with, combined with the pay talks. Everyone in my group, Bishop, Kevin, Wayne, all of you in my group, I said, I said, Last year, that would be what would happen with the COVID ballot. Bang on the nail with that one, wouldn't I? Uh, there's one more thing I'd like to clear up. I've been in this industry 11 years. And in those 11 years, I've noticed a lot of things change. Meal allowance, most places that's gone. A lot of garages and operators got rid of spread over payments canteens closing everywhere there's still no toilet facilities at the end of bus routes some there are but there's a lot that ain't these are basic requirements meal relief facilities sometimes if you're lucky you get a freezing cold bus with no water on it no tables no sanitary conditions no hand sanitizer in the middle of a pandemic and no heating when it's freezing cold. These are the wonderful things that Unite has given us over the years. John Murphy said to me uh, on the Facebook group on Metroline, have I ever been on strike? I had the opportunity when there was the Olympic bonus to go on strike and I balloted for strike action. But that was a garage in Watford and we had local and TFL drivers some of the TFL drivers had moved over to the locals but were still on the system as TFL. And the secretary obviously didn't do his own work, got it wrong, balloted people that weren't down as TFL. And some that were down as TFL didn't get balloted. So the company took it to court and they got an injunction. So we couldn't actually strike. The only time that I ever had the opportunity in 11 years to strike under Unite which I've paid into, 
and they fucked it up and I couldn't strike. Then there was a group of activists that came down and blocked the gates for a few hours in the morning. Went out, gave them cups of tea, cheered them on. Very happy. It's over the moon. I really wanted to strike. So Murphy, under your stewardship and your predecessor's stewardship, I haven't had the opportunity to strike. Because you know it hasn't given me the opportunity to strike. And although I'd like to strike, going on strike without the union's official say so is considered a legal strike. Therefore, I'd be classed as absent and would be sacked. So, there's your answer, John. I haven't been on strike because the only opportunity I had to come on strike, the secretary couldn't get his paperwork right and there was an injunction. Says a lot for Unite, really, doesn't it? I honestly couldn't see myself coming back to Unite for any particular reason, even if they turned into the most wonderful union. And the reason being is because I've had to go above and beyond to kick them right up the jack seat and to change things. And what have I got for it? Nothing but abuse, accusations of lying and all the rest of it. I remember when I first brought up the remote sign-on, Joanne Harris and all that, well done Jimmy, great video, blah, blah, blah. Now, because I've left you tonight and I've called you out, oh, everything you've done is crap. You haven't done nothing for us. All lies. All lies. You just sit there doing videos, think you're an activist, pretend. Mm. Yeah. That right, John, is it? Well, the only thing that is really, really holding me back from going all out is the fact that I do value my job. But if I was to ever lose my job, if United think I'm a pain in the arse now, they ain't seen nothing yet. <laughs> they ain't seen nothing yet. <laughs> Believe me, it'd be like a bomb going off. <laughs> anyway, ladies and gentlemen, you can all make your own minds up. I hear people saying, oh, um, I'm going to join this, I'm going to do that, I'm going to this, I'm going to that. And then next week they're changing their mind. Then they're going this way, then they're going that way. If you all want to stay in your life and keep the system going, that's great. You might make approximately £4 million, if our figures are right, about their membership being about nine and a half, ten thousand 10000 a year. And you've got to look at it like this. When you've got a defective bus and you keep writing it down on the defect and keep putting it back out the next day, the minute all the drivers start saying, no, I ain't driving it, and the company starts getting lost mileage, they start getting fined. And they start losing money. They fix the bus. So if we all left United and they started losing that four million pound, do you not think they fixed the bus? Because all the time you're paying in, and they're not they're not losing any money. They're not going to fix the bus. So I would suggest everybody refuse to drive the bus, and maybe they'll fix the bus. That's what I'd suggest. But I wouldn't suggest you go and join any other union. Why would I do a thing like that? I, I wouldn't want to upset the uh, TUC or or uh, interfere with the brilliant agreement. But just think about fixing the bus, people. Think about refusing to drive the bus. Four million pounds is a lot of money. I wouldn't want to lose four million pounds. Would you want to lose four million pounds? You never think about it, ladies and gentlemen. 